cold by madison cowine read for LibriVox.org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida a mist that froze beneath the moon and shook minutest frosty crystals in the air all night the wind was still as lonely care who sighs before her shivering ingle nook the face of winter wore a cruder look than when he shakes the icicles from his hair and in the boisterous pauses lets his stare freeze through the forest fettering bough and brook he is the despot now who sits and dreams of desolation and despair and smiles at poverty who hath no place to rest who wanders o'er life's snow-made pathless miles and sees the home of comfort's window gleams hugging her rag wrapped baby to her breast end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Winter Moon by Madison Carwine Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Deep in the dell I watched her as she rose A face of icy fire o'er the hills With snow-sad eyes that froze the forest rills And snow-sad feet that bleached the meadow snows Pale as some young witch who, a listening, goes To her first meeting with the fiend who fears Fixed demon eyes behind each bush she nears Stops, yet must on, fearful of following foes And so I chased her, startled in the wood Like a discovered or red who flies the fawn who found her sleeping each nude limb glittering betrayal through the solid jude till in a frosty cloud i saw her swim like a drowned face a blur beneath the ice end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Hillside Grave by Madison Carwine Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Ten thousand deep the drifted daisies break Here at the hill's foot, on its top, the wheat Hands meagre bearded, and in vague retreat The wisp like Blooms of the moth mullein's shake, and where the wild pink drops a crimson flake, and morning glories like young lips make sweet the shadowed hush low in the honeyed heat. The wild bees hum as if afraid to wake, one sleeping here with no white stone to tell if it be youth or maiden just the stem of one wild rose towering o'er briar and weed where all the day the wild birds requiem within those shade and timid violets fell an epitaph the stars alone can read end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Covered Bridge by Madison Cowine Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson There from its entrance, lost in matted vines, Where in the valley foams a waterfall, Is glimpsed a ruined mill's remaining wall. Here by the road the black-eyed Susan mines hot brass and bronze. The trumpet trailer shines red as the plumage of the cardinal. Faint from the forest comes the rain crow's call, where dusty summer dreams among the pines. This is the spot where spring writes wildflower verses in primrose pink, 
while drowsing o'er his reins the ploughman all unnoticing plods along and where the autumn opens weedy purses of sleepy silver while the corn piled wains rumble the bridge like some deep throat of song in the poem this recording is in the public domain The Creek Road by Madison Cowan, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Calling, the heron flies athwart the blue that sleeps above it, reach on rocky reach of water sings by sycamore and beech, in whose warm shade bloom lilies not a few it is a page whereon the sun and dew scrawl sparkling words in dawn's delicious speech a laboratory where the wood winds teach dissect each scent and analyze each hue not otherwise than beautiful doth it record the happenings of each summer day where we may read as in a catalogue when past a thresher when a load of hay or when a rabbit or a bird that lit and now a barefoot truant and his dog end of poem this recording is in the public domain abandoned by madison cowan Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The hornets build in plaster dropping rooms, and on its mossy porch the lizard lies. Around its chimney slow the swallow flies, and on its roof the locust snow there blooms, like some sad thought that broods here old perfumes haunt its dim stairs the cautious zephyr tries each gusty door like some dead hand then sighs with ghostly lips among the attic glooms and now a heron now a kingfisher flits in the willows where the riffle seems at each faint fall to hesitate to leap fluttering the silence with a little stir here summer seems a placid face asleep and the near world a figment of her dreams end of poem this recording is in the public domain omens by madison cowan read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c sad on the hills the poppied sunset died slow as a fungus breaking through the crusts of forest leaves the waning half moon thrusts through gray-brown clouds one milky silver side in her vague light the dogwoods dim descried seem dying torches flourished by the gusts the apple orchards seem the restless dusts of wind thin mists upon the hills they hide it is a night of omens whom late may beats like a wraith among her train of hours an apparition with appealing eye and hesitant foot that walks a willowed way and speaking through the fading moon and flowers bids her prepare her gentle soul to die end of poem this recording is in the public domain imperfection by madison cowan read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c not as the eye hath seen shall we behold romance and beauty when 
we've passed away that robbed the dull facts of the intimate day in life's wild raiment of unusual gold not as the ear hath heard shall we be told hereafter myth and legend once that lay warm at the heart of nature clothing clay in attributes of no material mould these were imperfect of necessity that wrought through imperfection for far ends of perfectness as calm philosophy teaching a child from his high heaven descends to earth's familiar things informingly vesting his thoughts in that it comprehends end of poem this recording is in the public domain arcana by madison cowan read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c earth hath her images of utterance her hieroglyphic meanings which elude a symbol language of similitude into whose secrets science may not glance in which the mind in nature doth romance in miracles that baffle if pursued no guess shall search them and no thought intrude beyond the limits of her sufferance so doth the great intelligence above hide his own thoughts creation and attire forms in the dream's ideal which he dowers with immaterial loveliness and love as essences of fragrance and of fire preaching the evangels of the stars and flowers end of poem this recording is in the public domain fulfillment by madison cowine read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson there are some souls who may look in on these essential peoples of the earth and air that have the stars and flowers in their care and read their soul suggestive secrecies heart intimates and comrades of the trees who from them learn what no known schools declare god's knowledge and from winds that singing fair god's gospel filled with mighty harmonies souls unto whom the waves impart a word of fuller faith the sunset and the dawn preach sermons more inspired even than the tongues of pentecost as distant heard in forms of change through nature upward drawn god doth address the immortal part of man in the poem this recording is in the public domain too late by madison Carwine, read for librivox dot org i looked upon a dead girl's face and heard what seemed the voice of death cry out to me deep in her heart all the agony of her lost dreams complaining word on word how on her soul no soul had touched or stirred her life's sad depths to rippling melody or made the imaged longing dare to be the realization of a hope deferred so in her life had love behaved to her between the lonely chapters of her years and her young eyes making no golden blur with god bright face and hair who led me to her side at last and bade me through my tears with death's dumb lips too late to see and know end of poem this recording is in the public domain
The Witch by Madison Cowan, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. She gropes and hobbles where the drop seed rocks are hairy with the lichens and the twist of knotted wolf's bane mumbling in the mist hawk-nosed and wrinkle-eyed with scrawny locks at her bent back the moon slow sinking mocks like some lewd evil whom the fiend hath kissed once at her feet the slipping serpent hissed and once the owl called to the forest fox what sabbath brew does she intend what root now seek for seal for what satanic spell of incantations and demonic fire from her rude hut hill hudded in the briar what dark familiar points her sure pursuit there with gaunt eyes red with the glow of hell end of poem this recording is in the public domain the somnambulist by madison cowan read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c oaks and a water by the water eyes ice green and steadfast as still stars and hair yellow as eyes deep in a she-wolf's lair and limbs like mist the lightning's flicker dies the humped oaks huddle under iron skies the dry wind whirls the dead leaves everywhere white on the water falls a vulture glare of moon and black the circling raven flies again the power of this thing hath laid compulsion on me and i seem to hear a sweet voice calling me beyond the gates to long for love i come each forest glade seems reaching out white arms to draw me near nearer and nearer to the death that waits end of poem this recording is in the public domain Opium by Madison Cowan, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. On reading De Quincey's Confessions of an Opium Eater, I seem to stand before a temple walled from shadows and nights unrealities, filled with dark music of dead memories and voices lost in darkness deep that called i entered and beneath the dome's high halled immensity one forced me to my knees before a blackness throned mid semblances and spectres crowned with flames of emerald then lo two shapes that thundered at mine ears the names of horror and oblivion priests of this god and bade me die and dream then in the heart of hell a thousand years me seemed i lay dead while the iron stream of time beat out the seconds one by one end of poem this recording is in the public domain Music and Sleep by Madison Cowline Read for LibriVox.org by Alicia Messiah These have a life that hath no part in death. These circumscribe the soul and make it strong. Beneath the breathing of a dream and song, Building a world of beauty in a breath. Unto the heart the voice of this one saith, 
ideals, its emotions live among. Unto the mind the other speaks a tongue, of visions where the guess, men Christen faith, may face the fact of immortality, as may arose its unembodied scent, or star its own reflected radiance. We do not know these save subconsciously, to whose mysterious shadows God hath lent no certain shape, no certain countenance. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ambition by Madison Cowine Read for LibriVox.org by Alicia Messiah now to my lips lift thou some opiate of dull forgetfulness, while in thy gaze still lures the loveless beauty that betrays, and in thy mouth the music that is hate. No promise more hast thou to make me wait, no smile to cozen my sick heart with praise. Far, far behind these stretched laborious days, and far before thee, labor soon and late. Thine is the fen fire that we deem a star, flying before us, ever fugitive. Thy mocking policy still holds afar, and thine the voice to which our longings give. Hope's siren face that speaks us sweet and fair, only at last to whelm us with despair. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Despondency by Madison Cowine. Read for LibriVox.org by Alicia Messiah. Not all the bravery that day puts on, of gold and azure, ardent or austere, shall ease my soul of sorrow grief more dear than all the joy that heavenly hope may dawn. Far up the skies the rumor of the dawn may run and eve like some wild torch appear. These shall not change the darkness gathered here of thought that rusts like an old sword undrawn. Oh, for a place far sunken from the sun a wild wood cave of primitive rocks and moss, where sleep and silence, breast to married breast, lie with their child, night-eyed oblivion, where, freed from all the burden of my cross, I might forget, I might forget, and rest. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Despair by Madison Cowine Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk Shut in with phantoms of life's hollow hopes And shadows of old sins satiety slew And the young ghosts of the dead dreams love knew Out of the day into the night she gropes Behind her, high, the silvered summit slopes Of hope and faith she will not turn to view, But towards the cave of heartbreak, harsh of hue, She goes where all the dropsied horror ropes. There is a voice of waters in her ears, And on her brow a wind that never dies. One is the anguish of desired tears. One is the sorrow of unuttered sighs. And burdened with the immemorial years, Downward she goes with never-lifted eyes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Quatrains by Madison Cowine Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Penury. Above his misered embers, gaunt and gray, 
with toil gnarled limbs he stoops around his hut want like the hobbling hag goes night and day trying the windows and the doors tight shut strategy craft's silent sister and the daughter deep of contemplation she who spreads below a hostile tent soft comfort for her foe with eyes of jail watching till he sleep tempest with helms of lightning glittering in the skies on steeds of thunder form on cloudy form terrific beauty in their hair and eyes sweep down the wild valkyries of the storm the locust blossom the spirit spring in rainy raiment met the spirit summer for a moonlit hour sweet from their greeting kisses warm and wet was born the fragrant beauty of this flower melancholy with shadowy immortelles of memory about her brow she sits with eyes that look upon the stream of lethe wearily in hesitant hands death's partly opened book content among the meadows of life's sad unease in labor still renewing her soul's youth with trust for patience and with love for peace singing she goes with the calm face of ruth life and death of our own selves god makes a glass wherein two shades are imaged passing like a breath and one is life whose other name is sin and one is love whose other name is death sorrow death takes her hand and leads her through the waste of her own soul wherein she hears the voice of lost love's tears and famishing can but taste the dead sea-fruit of life's remembered joys End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Last Word by Madison Cobbine Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Not for myself, but for the sake of song, Would I succeed as others who have gave their lives unto her, Shaping sure and strong her lovely limbs That made them God and slave. Not for myself, but for the sake of art, would I advance beyond the other's best, winning a deeper secret from her heart, to hang it moonlike mid the starry rest. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Nature Poems Second Series Forward by Madison Cowine Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson in the first rare spring of song in my heart's young hours in my youth twas thus i sang choosing mid the flowers fair the dandelion is but for me too lowly and the winsome violet is forsooth too holy but the touch me not go to what a face that's speckled like a common milking maid's whom the sun hath freckled then the wild rose is a flirt and the trillium lily in her spotless gown is a prude sanctified and silly by her cap the columbine to my mind's too merry gossips i would sooner woo some plebeian berry and the shy anemone well her face shows sorrow pale good sooth alive to-day dead and gone to-morrow then that whole eyed buxom wench big and blonde and lazy she's been chosen over off sirs i mean the daisy pleasant persons are they all but their virtues many faith i know but good of each and not ill of any but i choose a may apple she shall be my lady blooming hidden and refined sweet in places shady in my youth twas thus i sang in my heart's young hours in the first rare spring of song choosing mid the flowers so i hesitated when time alone was reckoned by the hours that fancy smiled love and beauty beckoned hard it was for me to choose from the flowers that flattered and the blossom that i chose soon lay dead and scattered hard i found it then ah me hard i found the choosing harder harder since i've found all too hard the losing haply had i chosen then from the weeds that tangle wayside 
woodland and the wall of my garden's angle i had chosen better yea for these later hours longer live the weeds and oft sweeter are than flowers in the poem this recording is in the public domain the cricket by madison coyne read for LibriVox.org by sophia koshik in san francisco california first of the insect choir in the spring we hear his faint voice fluttering in the grass beneath some blossoms rosy covering or frond of fern upon a wildwood pass when in the marsh in clamorous orchestras the shrill high loads pipe when in the haws bee swarming blooms or tasseling sassafras sweet threads of silvery song the sparrow draws bow like athwart the vibrant atmosphere like some dim dream low breathed in slumber's ear we hear his cheer 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 all summer long the mellowing meadows thrill to his blithe music be it day or night close gossip of the grass on field and hill he serenades the silence with delight silence that hears the melon slowly split with ripeness and the plump peach hornet bit loosen and fall and everywhere the white warm silk-like stir of leafy lights that flit as breezes blow above which loudly clear like joy who sings of life and has no fear we hear his cheer 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 then in the autumn by the waterside leaf huddled or along the weed-grown walks he dirges low the flowers that have died or with their ghosts hold solitary talks lover of warmth all day above the click and crunching of the sorghum press through thick sweet steam of juice all night when white as chalk the hunter's moon hangs o'er the rustling rick within the barn mid munching cow and steer soft as a memory the heart holds dear we hear his cheer 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 kinsman and cousin of the fairy race all winter long he sets his sober mirth that brings good luck to many a fireplace to folklore song and saga of the hearth between the backlog's bluster and the slim high twittering of the kettle sounds that him home comforts when outside the starless earth is icicled in every laden limb defying frost and all the sad and sere like love that dies not and is always near we hear his cheer 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 end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Tree Toad by Madison Cowine Recorded for LibriVox.org by Cornell Nemish Secluded, solitary on some underbough or cradled in a leaf, mid glimmering light, like Puck thou crouchest, haply watching how the slow toadstool comes bulging moony white through loosening loam or how against the night the glow-worm gathers silver to endow the darkness with or how the dew conspires to hang at dusk with lamps of chilly fires each blade that shrivels now o vague confederate of the weeper will of owl and cricket and the cat did thou gatherest up the silence in one shrill vibrating note and sensed it where half hid in cedars twilight sleeps each azure lid drooping a line of golden eyeball still afar yet near i hear thy dewy voice within the garden of the hours upwise on dusk's deep daffodil
minstrel of moisture, silent when high noon shows her tanned face among the thirsting clover and parching meadows. Thy tenebrious tune wakes with the dew, or when the rain is over. Thou troubadour of wetness and damp lover of all cool things, admitted comrade boon of twilight's hush, and a little intimate of Eve's first fluttering star and delicate round rim of a rainy moon. Our trumpeter of dwarf land, does thy horn inform the gnomes and goblins of the hour when they may gamble under how and thorn, straddling each winking web and twinkling flower? Or bell ringer of elf land, whose tall tower the Liriodendron is, from whence is born the elfin music of thy bell's deep bass, to summon the fairies to their starlit maze, to summon them or warn. The End of Poem this recording is in the public domain. The Screech Owl by Madison Cowine Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf When one by one the stars have trembled Through Eve's shadowy hues of violet, rose, and fire, As on a pansy bloom the limpid dew orbs its bright beads, and one by one the choir of insects wakes on nodding bush and briar. Then through the woods, where wandering winds pursue a ceaseless whisper, like an eerie lyre struck in the Earl King's halls, where ghosts and dreams hold revelry, your goblin music screams, shivering and strange, as some strange thought come true brown as the agaric that frills dead trees or those fantastic fungi of the woods that crowd the dampness are you kin to these in some mysterious way that still eludes my fancy you who haunt the solitudes with hag-like wailings voice that seems to freeze out of the darkness like the scent which broods rank and rain-sodden over autumn nooks that to the mind might well suggest such looks ghastly and gray as pale clairvoyance sees you people the night with weirdness lone and drear beneath the stars you cry your wizard runes and in the haggard silence fill with fear your shuddering hoot seems some wild grief that croons mockery and terror or beneath the moon's cloud hurrying glimmer to the startled ear, crazed madman snatches of old, perished tunes, the witless wit of outcast Edgar there in the wild night, or wan with all despair, the mirthless laughter of the fool in Lear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Chipmunk Read Felipevox.org by Alan Lawley. He makes a roadway of the crumbling fence, or on the fallen tree, brown as a leaf, four strips with russet, gambles down the dense, green twilight of the woods, we see not whence, he comes nor whither, tis a time too brief. He vanishes, swift carrier of some fay, some pixie steed that haunts our child belief, a goblin glimpse from woodland way to way. What harlequin mood of nature qualified? 
him so with happiness, and limbed him with such young activity as winds that ride, the ripples have that dance on every side, as sunbeams know that urge the sap and pith through hearts of trees, yet made him to delight, gnome like in darkness, like a moonlight myth leering in labyrinths of the under night. Here, by a rock, beneath the moss, a hole leads to his home, the den wherein he sleeps, lulled by near noises of the cautious mole, tunnelling its mine like some ungainly troll, or by the tireless cricket there that keeps, picking its drowsy and monotonous loot, or slowly sounds of grass that creeps and creeps, and trees unrolling mighty, root on root. Such is the music of his sleeping hours. Day hath another, tis a melody. He trips to, made by the assembled flowers, and light and fragrance, laughing mid the bowers, and ripeness, busy, with the acorn tree, such strange, perhaps, has filled with mute amaze, the silent music of earth's ecstasy, the satire's soul, the fawn of classic days. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wild Iris by Madison Cowine, read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf. That day we wandered mid the hills, so lone clouds are not lonelier. The forest lay in emerald darkness round us, many a stone and gnarly root, grey moss, made wild our way, and many a bird, the glimmering light along, showered the golden bubbles of its song. Then in the valley where the brook went by, silvering the ledges that it rippled from, an isolated slip of fallen sky, epitomizing heaven in its sum, an iris bloomed, blue as if flower disguised, the gaze of spring had there materialized. I have forgotten many things since then, much beauty and much happiness and grief, and toiled and dreamed among my fellow men, Rejoicing in the knowledge, life is brief. Tis winter now, so says each barren bough, And face and hair proclaim, tis winter now. I would forget the gladness of that spring. I would forget that day when she and I, Between the birdsong and the blossoming, Went hand in hand beneath the soft spring sky. Much is forgotten, yea, and yet... And yet the things we would we never can forget. Nor I, how may, then minted treasuries of crowfoot gold, And moulded out of light the sorrel's cups, Whose elfin chalices of limpid spar were streaked with rosy white. Nor all the stars of twinkling spiderwort, And mandrake moons with which her brows were girt. But most of all, yea, it were well for me, me and my heart, that I forget that flower, the blue wild iris, azure fleur de lis, that she and I together found that hour. Its recollection can but emphasize the pain of loss, remindful of her eyes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Path by the Creek by Madison Cowan, read for LibriVox.org, by Chad Horner, 24th of May, 2019, from Ballyclare, Northern Ireland. The Path by the Creek There is a path that leads through purple iron weeds, by button bush a mallow along a creek, a path that wildflowers hallow, that wild birds seek, roofed thick with eglantine and grape and trumpet vine. This side the blackberry sweet, blue cobalt in the heat, 
that side a creamy yellow in summertime the pawpaws slowly mellow an autumn's prime strews red the chickasaw persimmon brown and haw the glittering dragonfly a winged gem goes by the tawny wasp and hornet make drowsy drone the beetle like a garnet basks on the stone and butterflies float there spangling with gold the air here the brown thrashers hide and chat and catbird chide the blue kingfisher houses above the stream and here the heron drowses lost in his dream the vero's flitting note makes woodlands more remote and nigh a cow's slow bell tinkles from dale to dale where breeze drop petals winnow from blossomy limbs on waters where the minnow faint tickling swims where in the roof arched shade slim prisms of light are laid when in the tangled thorn the new moon hangs a horn or mid the sunset's islands guides her canoe the brown owl in the silence calls and the dew beads glimmering orbs of damp each one a glow-worm lamp then when the night is still here sings the whip her will and stealthily sounds of crickets and winds that pass whispering three bramble thickets along the grass faint with warm scents of hay seem feet of dreams astray and where the water shines dark three tree twisted vines some water spirit dreaming braids in her hair a star's reflection seeming a jewel there while all the sweet night long ripples her quiet song would i could imitate o path thy happy state making my life all beauty all bloom and beam knowing no other duty but just to dream and far from pain and woe lead feet that come and go leading to calm content o'er ways the master went through lowly things and humble to peace and love teaching the lives that stumble to look above forget the world of toil and all its mad turmoil end of poem this recording is in the public domain along the stream by madison cowine read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson where the violet shadows brood under cottonwoods and beeches through whose leaves the restless reaches of the river glance i've stood while the red bird and the thrush set to song the morning hush there when wakening woods encroach on the shadowy winding waters and bluets april's daughters at the darling spring's approach star their myriads through the trees all the land is one with peace under some imposing cliff that with hush and tree and boulder thrusts a gray gigantic shoulder o'er the stream i've oared a skiff while great clouds of iceberg hue lounged along the noonday blue there when harvest heights impend over shores of rippling summer and to greet the fair newcomer june the wild rose thickets bend in a million blossoms dressed all the land is one with rest on some rock where gaunt the oak reddens and the sombre cedar darkens like a sachem leader i have lain and watched the smoke of the steamboat far away trailed along the dying day there when margin waves reflect autumn colors gay and sober and the indian girl october wampum like in berries decked leans above the leaf-strewn streams all the land is one with dreams through the bottoms where out tossed by the wind's wild hands a shiver bend the willows o'er the river i have walked in sleet and frost while beneath the cold round moon frozen gleamed the long lagoon there when leafless woods uplift spectral arms and storm blasts splinter and the hoary trapper winter builds his camp of ice and drift with his snow pelts furred and shod all the land is one with god in the poem this recording is in the public domain voices by madison kawine read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk when bloodroot blooms and trillium flowers 
unclasp their stars to sun and rain my heart strikes hands with winds and showers and wanders in the woods again o urging impulse born of spring that makes glad april of my soul no bird however wild of wing is more impatient of control impetuous of pulse it beats within my blood and bears me hence above the housetops and the streets i hear its happy eloquence it tells me all that i would know of birds and buds of blooms and bees i seem to hear the blossoms blow and leaves unfolding on the trees i seem to hear the bluebells ring faint purple peals of perfume and the honey-throated poppies fling their golden laughter o'er the land it calls to me it sings to me i hear its far voice night and day i cannot choose but go when tree and flower clamour come away End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Road Home by Madison Kawine. Read for LibriVox.org by Matthew D. Robinson. Over the hills as the peewee flies, under the blue of the southern skies. Over the hills where the red bird wings like a scarlet blossom or sits and sings. Under the shadow of rock and tree where the warm wind drones with the honey bee. And the tall wild carrots around you sway their lace like flowers of cloudy gray. By the black cohosh and its pearl white plume, a nod in the woodland's odorous gloom. By the old rail fence in the elder shade that the myriad hosts of the weeds invade, where the butterfly weed like a coal of fire blurs orange red through brush and briar, where the penny royal and mint smell sweet and blackberries tangle the humming heat, the old road leads, then crosses the creek where the minnow dartles a silvery streak where the cows wade deep through the blue-eyed grass and the flickering dragonflies gleaming pass. That road is easy, however long, which wends with beauty as toil with song. And the road we follow shall lead us straight past creek and wood to a farmhouse gate, past hill and hollow whence scents are blown of dew-wet clover that scythes have mown, to a house that stands with porches wide and gray low roof on the green hillside, colonial, stately, mid shade and shine of the locust tree and the southern pine, with its orchard acres and meadow lands stretched out before it like welcoming hands, and gardens where in the myrrh sweet June magnolias blossom with many a moon of fragrance and in the feldspar light of august roses bloom red and white in a woodbine arbor a perfumed place a slim girl sits with listening face her bonnet by her a sunbeam lies on her lovely hair in her earnest eyes her eyes as blue as the distant deeps of the heavens above where the high hawk sleeps a book beside her, wherein she read till she saw him coming, she heard his tread. Come home at last, come back from the war, in his eyes a smile, on his brow a scar. To the south come back, who wakes from her dream to the love and the peace of a new regime. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Drouth by Madison Kawine Read for LibriVox.org by Matthew D. Robinson
The hot sunflowers by the glaring pike lift shields of sultry brass. The teasel tops pink thorned advance with bristling spike on spike against the furious sunlight. Fion and cops are sick with summer. Now with breathless stops the locust symbol. Now grasshoppers beat their castanets, and rolled in dust a team like some mean life wrapped in its sorry dream. An empty wagon rattles through the heat. Where now the blue, blue flags, the flowers whose mouths are moist and musky? Where the sweet-breathed mint that made the brook bank herby? Where the South's wild morning glories, rich in hues that hint at coming showers that the rainbows tint? Where all the blossoms that the wildwood knows, the frail oxalis hidden in its leaves, the Indian pipe pale as a soul that grieves, the freckled touch-me-not and forest rose? Dead, dead. All dead beside the drouth-burnt brook, Shrouded in moss or in the shriveled grass, Where waved their bells from which the wild bee shook the dewdrop once, Gaunt in a nightmare mass the rank weeds crowd, Through which the cattle pass thirsty and lean seeking some meager spring, Closed in with thorns on which stray bits of wool The panting sheep have left that sought the cool, From morn till evening wearily wandering. No bird is heard, no throat to whistle awake the sleepy hush, To let its music leak fresh bubble-like through bloom roofs of the brake. Only the green-blue heron, famine-weak, Searching the stale pools of the minnowless creek, utters its call, and then the rain crow, too, false prophet now, croaks to the stagnant air, while overhead, still as if painted there, a buzzard hangs black on the burning blue. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Broken Drowth by Madison Cowine Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk It seemed the listening forest held its breath Before some vague and unapparent form of fear Approaching with the wings of death On the impending storm Above the hills big bellying clouds loomed Black and ominous yet silent as the blue that pools calm heights of heaven deepening back twixt clouds of snowdrift hue then instantly as when a multitude shout riot and war through some tumultuous town innumerable voices swept the wood as wild the wind rushed down and fierce and few as when a strong man weeps great raindrops dashed the dust and overhead ponderous and vast down the prodigious deeps went slow the thunder's tread and swift and furious as when giants fence the lightning foils of tempest went insane then far and near sonorous earth grew dense with long sweet sweep of rain End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Feud by Madison Cowine. Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf. A mile of lane hedged high with iron weeds and dying daisies, white with sun that leads downward into a wood through which a stream steals like a shadow over which is laid a bridge of logs worn deep with many a team sunk in the tangled shade far off a wood dove lifts its lonely cry and in the sleepy silver of the sky a gray hawk wheels scarcely larger than a hand from point to point 
the road grows worse and worse until that place is reached where all the land seems burdened with some curse a ragged fence of pickets warped and sprung on which the fragments of a gate are hung divides a hill the fox and groundhog haunt a wilderness of briars o'er whose tops a battered barn is seen low-roofed and gaunt mid fields that know no crops fields over which a path o'erwhelmed with burrs and ragweeds noisy with the grasshoppers leads lost irresolute as paths the cows wear through the woods unto a woodshed then with wrecks of windows to a huddled house where men have murdered men a house whose tottering chimney clay and rock is seamed and crannied whose lame door and lock are bullet board around which there and here are sinister stains one dreads to look around the place seems thinking of that time of fear and dares not breathe a sound within is emptiness the sunlight falls on faded journals papering its walls on advertisement chromos torn with time around a hearth where wasps and spiders build the house is dead meseems that night of crime it too was shot and killed end of poem this recording is in the public domain unanointed by madison kawine read for LibriVox.org by matthew d robinson upon the siren haunted seas between fate's mythic shores within a world of moon and mist where dusk and daylight wed i see a phantom galley and its hull is banked with oars with ghostly oars that move to song a song of dreams long dead oh we are sick of rowing here with toil our arms are numb with smiting year on weary year salt furrows of the foam our journey's end is never near and will no nearer come beyond our reach the shores appear of far elysium within a land of cataracts and mountains old and sand beneath whose heavens ruins rise o'er which the stars burn red i see a spectral cavalcade with crucifix in hand and shadowy armor march and sing a song of dreams long dead oh we are weary marching on our limbs are travel-worn with cross and sword from dawn to dawn we wend with raiment torn the leagues to go the leagues we've gone are sand and rock and thorn the way is long to avalon beyond the deeps of morn they are the cursed the souls who yearn and evermore pursue the vision of a vain desire a splendor far ahead to whom god gives the poet's dream without the grasp to do the artist's hope without the scope between the quick and dead i too am weary toiling where the winds and waters beat when shall i ease the oar i bear and rest my tired feet when will the white moon cease to glare the red suns veil their heat and from the heights blow sweet the air of love's divine retreat end of poem this recording is in the public domain sunset and storm by madison kawine read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk deep with divine tautology the sunset's mighty mystery again has traced the scroll-like west with hieroglyphs of burning gold forever new forever old its miracle is manifest time lays the scroll away 
and now above the hills a giant brow night lifts of cloud and from her arm barbaric black upon the world with thunder wind and fire is hurled her awful argument of storm what part o oh man is yours in such whose awe and wonder are in touch with nature speaking rapture to your soul yet leaving in your reach no human word of thought or speech expressive of the thing you view end of poem this recording is in the public domain beech blooms by madison kawine read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk among the valleys the wild oxalis lifts up its chalice of pink and pearl and balsam breathing from out their sheathing the myriad wreathing green leaves uncurl the whole world brightens with spring that lightens the foot that frightens the building thrush where water tosses on ferns and mosses the squirrel crosses the beechen hush and vision on vision like ships elision on some white mission sails cloud on cloud with scents of clover the winds brim over and in the cover the stream is loud twixt bloom that blanches the orchard branches old farms and ranches gleam in the gloam through fields for sowing mid blossoms blowing the cows come lowing the cows come home where ways are narrow a vesper sparrow flits like an arrow of living rhyme the red sun poises and farmyard noises mix with glad voices of milking time when dusk disposes of all its roses and darkness closes and work is done a moon's white feather in starry weather and two together whose hearts are one end of poem this recording is in the public domain Worship by Madison Cowine, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The mornings raise voices of gold in the Almighty's praise. The sunsets soar in coral crimson from far shore to shore. Each is a blast, reverberant of color, seen as vast concussions that the vocal firmament in worship sounds o'er every continent not for our ears the cosmic music of the rolling spheres that sweeps the skies music we hear but only with our eyes for all too weak our mortal frames to bear the words thee speak those detonations that we name the dawn and sunset hues earth's harmony puts on end of poem this recording is in the public domain Unheard by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org By Cornel Nemesh, Reno, Nevada All things are wrought of melody Unheard yet full of speaking spells Within the rock, within the tree a soul of music dwells, a mute symphonic sense that thrills the silent frame of mortal things. Its heart beats in the ancient hills, and in each flower sings. To harmony all growth is set, each seed is but a music moat, from which each plant, each violet, evolves its purple note. Compact of melody, 
The rose woos the soft wind with strain on strain of crimson, and the lily blows its white bars to the rain. Trees are peons, and the grass one long green fugue beneath the sun. Song is their life. And all shall pass, shall end when song is done. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Reincarnation by Madison Carwine. Read for LibriVox.org. High in the place of outraged liberty, he ruled the world, an emperor and god. His iron armies swept the land and sea, and conquered nations trembled at his nod. By him the love that fills man's soul with light, and makes a heaven of earth, was crucified. Lust crowned he lived, yea, lived in God's despite, and old in infamies, a king he died. Justice begins now. Many centuries in some vile body must his soul atone as slave, as beggar, loathsome with disease, less than the dog at which we fling a stone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On Chenoweth's Run by Madison Kawine Read for LibriVox.org by Matthew D. Robinson I thought of the road through the glen, with its hawk's nest high in the pine, with its rock where the fox had his den, mid tangles of sumac and vine, where she swore to be mine. I thought of the creek and its banks, now glooming, now gleaming with sun, the rustic bridge builded of planks, the bridge over Chenoweth's run, where I wooed her and won. I thought of the house in the lane, with its pinks and its sweet mignonette, its fence and the gate with its chain, its porch where the roses hung wet, where I kissed her and met. Then I thought of the family graves, walled rudely with stone in the west, where the sorrowful cedar tree waves, and the wind is a spirit distressed where they laid her to rest. And my soul, overwhelmed with despair, cried out on the city and mart, how I longed, how I longed to be there, away from the struggle and smart, by her and my heart. By her and my heart in the west, laid sadly together as one, on her grave for a moment to rest, far away from the noise and the sun, on Chenoweth's run. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Wreck We Scat by Madison Kaywin Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen Vancouver, B.C. The roses mourn for her who sleeps within the tomb. For her each lily flower weeps, dew and perfume. In each neglected flower bed, each blossom droops its lovely head. They miss her touch, they miss her tread, her face of bloom, of happy bloom. The very breezes grieve for her, a lonely grief 
for her each tree is sorer each blade and leaf the foliage rocks itself and sighs and to its woe the wind replies they miss her girlish laugh and cries whose life was brief was all too brief the sunlight too seems pale with care or sick with woe the memory haunts it of her hair its golden glow no more within the bramble brake the sleepy bloom is kissed awake the sun is sad for her dear sake whose head lies low lies dim and low the bird that sang so sweet is still at dusk and dawn no more it makes the silence thrill of wood and lawn in vain the buds when it is near open each pink and perfumed ear the song it sings she will not hear who now is gone is dead and gone ah well she sleeps who loved them well the birds and bowers the fair the young the lovable who once was ours alas that loveliness must pass must come to lie beneath the grass that youth and joy must fade alas and die like flowers earth's sweetest flowers end of poem this recording is in the public domain the quest by madison cowan read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c first i asked the honey bee busy in the balmy bowers saying sweetheart tell it me have you seen her honey bee she is cousin to the flowers all the sweetness of the south in her wild rose face and mouth but the bee passed silently then i asked the forest bird warbling by the woodland waters saying dearest have you heard have you heard her forest bird she is one of music's daughters never song so sweet by half as the music of her laugh but the bird said not a word next i asked the evening sky hanging out its lamps of fire saying loved one passed she by tell me tell me evening sky she the star of my desire sister whom the pleiads lost and my soul's high pentecost but the sky made no reply where is she ah where is she she to whom both love and duty bind me yea immortally where is she ah where is she symbol of the earth soul's beauty i have lost her help my heart find her her who is a part of the pagan soul of me end of poem this recording is in the public domain before the rain by madison kaywin read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c before the rain low in the obscure east weak and morose the moon hung sickly gray around its disk the storm mists cracked and creased wove an enormous web wherein it lay like some white spider hungry for its prey vindictive looked the scowling firmament in which each star that flashed a dagger ray seemed filled with malice of some dark intent the marsh frog croaked and underneath the stone 
the peevish cricket raised a creaking cry within the world these sounds were heard alone save when the ruffian wind swept from the sky making each tree like some sad spirit sigh or shook the clumsy beetle from its weed that in the drowsy darkness bungling by sharded the silence with its feverish speed slowly the tempest gathered hours passed before was heard the thunder's sullen drum rumbling night's hollow and the earth at last restless with waiting like a woman dumb with doubting of the love that should have clum her casement hours ago avowed again mid protestations joy that he had come and all night long i heard the heavens explain end of poem this recording is in the public domain after rain by madison cowin read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c behold the blossom bosomed day again with all the star white hours in her train laughs out of pearl lights through a golden ray that leaning on the woodland wildness blends a sprinkled amber with the showers that lay their oblong emeralds on the leafy ends behold her bend with maiden braided brows above the wildflower sideways with its strain of dewy happiness to kiss again each drop to death or under rainy boughs with fingers fragrant as the woodland rain gather the sparkles from the sycamore to set within the core of crimson roses girdling her hips where each bud dreams and drips smoothing her blue black hair where many a tusk of iris flashes like the falchions keen of fairy round blue banners of their queen is it a naiad singing in the dusk that haunts the spring where all the moss is musk with footsteps of the flowers on the banks or but a wild bird voluble with thanks balm for each blade of grass the hours prepare a festival each weeds invited to each bee is drunken with the honeyed air and all the heaven is eloquent with blue the wet hay glitters and the harvester tinkles his scythe and twinkling as the dew that shall not spare blossom or briar in its sweeping path and ere it cut one swath rings them they die and tells them to prepare what is the spice that haunts each glen and glade a dryad's lips who slumbers in the shade a fawn who lets the heavy ivy wreath slip to his thigh as reaching up he pulls the chestnut blossoms in whole bosomfuls a sylvan spirit whose sweet mouth doth breathe her viewless presence near us unafraid or troops of ghosts of blooms that whitely wade the brook whose wisdom knows no other song but that the bird sings where it builds beneath the wild rose and sits singing all day long oh let me sit with silence for a space a little while forgetting that fierce part of man that struggles in the toiling mart 
where god can look into my heart's own heart from unsold heights made amiable with grace and where the sermons that the old oaks keep can steal into me and what better then than turning to the moss a quiet face to fall asleep a little while to sleep and dream of wiser worlds and wiser men end of poem this recording is in the public domain sunset clouds by madison cawin read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c low clouds the lightning veins and cleaves torn from the wilderness of storm swept westward like enormous leaves o'er field and farm and in the west on burning skies their wrath is quenched their hate is hushed and deep their drifted thunder lies with splendor flushed the black turns gray the gray turns gold and seed in deeps of radiant rose summits of fire manifold they now repose what dreams they bring what thoughts reveal they have their source in loveliness through which the doubts i often feel grow less and less through which i see that other night that cloud called death transformed of love to flame and pointing with its light to life above end of poem this recording is in the public domain Riches by Madison Cowan, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. What minds the morning heavens unfold? What far Alaska's of the sky, that veined with elemental gold, Sierra on Sierra rise, heap up the gold of all the world the ore that makes men fools and slaves what is it to the gold cloud curled that rivers through the sunset's caves search earth for riches all who will the gold that soils that turns to dust mine be the wealth no thief can steal the gold of beauty not can rust End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Age of Gold by Madison Cowan. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The clouds that tower in storm, that beat arterial thunder in their veins the wild flowers lifting shyly sweet their perfect faces from the plains all high all lowly things of earth for no vague end have had their birth low strips of mist that mesh the moon above the foaming waterfall and mountains that god's hand hath hewn and forests where the great winds call within the grasp of such a sea are parts of a conspiracy to seize the soul with beauty hold the heart with love and thus fulfill within ourselves the age of gold that never died and never will as long as one true nature feels the wonders that the world reveals end of poem this recording is in the public domain a song for labor by madison cawin 
Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Oh, the morning meads, the dewy meads, where he plows and harrows and sows the seeds, singing a song of manly deeds in the blossoming springtime weather the heart in his bosom as high as the word said to the sky by the mating bird while the beat of an answering heart is heard his heart and hers together oh the noonday heights the sunlit heights where he stoops to the harvest his keen scythe smites singing a song of the work that requites in the ripening summer weather the soul in his body as light as the sigh of the little cloud breeze that cools the sky while he hears an answering soul reply his soul and hers together oh the evening veils the twilight veils where he labors and sweats to the thud of flails singing a song of the toil that he hails in the fruitful autumn weather in heart and in soul as free from fears as the first white star in the sky that appears while the music of life and of love he hears her life and his together end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Love of Loves by Madison Carwine Read for LibriVox.org I have not seen her face, and yet she is more sweet than anything of earth than rose or violet that winds of may and sunbeams bring of all we know past or to come that beauty holds within its net she is the high compendium and yet i have not touched her robe and still she is more dear than lyric words and music, or than strains that fill the throbbing throats of forest birds. Of all we mean by poetry, that rules the soul and charms the will, she is the deep epitome, and still, she is my world, ah, pity me, a dream that flies whom I pursue, whom all pursue, whoe'er they be, who toil for art and dare and do, the shadow love for whom they sigh, the far ideal affinity, for whom they live and gladly die, ah me. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Three Things by Madison Cowan Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. There are three things of earth That help us more Than those of heavenly birth That all implore than love or faith or hope for which we strive and grope the first one is desire who takes our hand and fills our hearts with fire none may withstand through whom we're lifted far above both moon and star the second one is dream who leads our feet by an immortal gleam to visions sweet through whom our forms put on dim attributes of dawn the last of these is toil who maketh true within the world's turmoil 
the other two through whom we may behold ourselves with kings enrolled end of poem this recording is in the public domain Immortals by Madison Cowan, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. As some worn moment of repose, in one rich rose, sums all the summer's lovely bloom and pure perfume, so did her soul epitomize all hopes that make life wise who lies before us now with glitted eyes faith's amaranth of truth crowning her youth as some melodious note or strain may so contain all of sweet music in one chord or lyric word so did her loving heart suggest all dreams that make life blessed who lives before us now with pulseless breast loves asphodel of duty crowning her beauty end of poem this recording is in the public domain a lullaby by madison cowen read for LibriVox .org by linda Bree nielsen vancouver b c in her wimple of wind and her slippers of sleep the twilight comes like a little goose girl herding her owls with many two woos her little brown owls in the forest deep where dimly she walks in her whispering shoes and gown of glimmering pearl sleep sleep little one sleep this is the road to rockaby town rockaby lullaby where dreams are cheap here you can buy any dream for a crown sleep sleep little one sleep the cradle you lie in is soft and is deep the wagon that takes you to rockaby town now you go up sweet now you go down rockaby lullaby now you go down and after the twilight comes midnight who wears a mantle of purple so old so old who stables the lily white moon it is said in a wonderful chamber with violet stairs up which you can see her come silent of tread on hoofs of pale silver and gold dream dream little one dream this is the way to lullaby land lullaby rockaby where white as cream sugar plum bowers drop sweets in your hand dream dream little one dream the cradle you lie in is tight at each seam the boat that goes sailing to lullaby land over the sea sweet over the sand lullaby rockaby over the sand the twilight and midnight are lovers you know and each to the other is true is true and there on the moon through the heavens they ride with the little brown owls all huddled a row through meadows of heaven where every side blossom the stars and the dew rest rest little one rest rockaby town is in lullaby owl rockaby lullaby set like a nest deep in the heart of a song and a smile rest rest little one rest the cradle you lie in is warm as my breast the white bird that bears you to lullaby isle out of the east sweet into the west rockaby lullaby into the west 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Pestilence by Madison Cawain. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. High on a throne of noisome ooze and heat, mid rotting trees of bayou and lagoon, ghastly she sits beneath the skeleton moon, a tawny horror coiling at her feet, fever whose eyes keep watching serpent-like until her eyes shall bid him rise and strike end of poem this recording is in the public domain musings by madison Cawain, read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c one inspiration all who have toiled for art who've won or lost sat equal priests at her high pentecost only the chrism and sacrament of flame anointing all inspired not all the same two apportionment how often in our search for joy below hoping for happiness we chance on woe three victory they who take courage from their own defeat are victors too no matter how much beat four preparation how often hope's fair flower blooms richest where the soul was fertilized with black despair five disillusion those unrequited in their love who die have never drained life's chief illusion dry six success success allures us in the earth and skies we seek to win her but to amorous mocking she flees us haply were we wise we should not strive and she would come to us seven science miranda like above the world she waves the wand of prospero and beautiful ariel the airy caliban the dull lightning and steam are her unwilling slaves eight the universal wind wild son of heaven with laughter and alarm now east now west now north now south he goes bearing in one harsh hand dark death and storm and in the other sunshine and a rose nine compensation yea whom he loves the lord god chasteneth with disappointments so that this side death through suffering and failure they know hell to make them worthy in that heaven to dwell of love's attainment where they come to be parts of its beauty and divinity ten poppies summer met sleep at sunset dreaming within the south drugged with his soul's deep slumber red with her heart's hot drouth these are the drowsy kisses she pressed upon his mouth eleven her eyes and mouth there is no paradise like that which lies deep in the heavens of her azure eyes there is no eden here on earth that glows like that which smiles rich in her mouth's red rose twelve her soul to me not only does her soul suggest 
palms and the peace of tropic shore and wood but ocean far beyond the golden west the fortunate islands of true womanhood thirteen her face the gladness of our southern spring the grace of summer and the dreaminess of fall are parts of her sweet nature such a face was ruth's methink divinely spiritual end of poem this recording is in the public domain the message of the lilies by madison cowen read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c my soul and i went walking beneath the moon of spring the lilies pale were talking we heard them murmuring from dimly moonlit places they thrust long throats of white and lifted fairy faces of fragrant snow and light their language was an essence yet clear as any birds and from it grew a presence as music grows from words a spirit born of silence and chastity and dew among elysian islands were not more white to view a spirit born of fire and holiness and snow within the heavens desire were not more pure to know he smiled among them lifting pale hands of prayer and peace and through the moonlight drifting came words to me like these we are his lilies lilies whose praises here we sing we are the lilies lilies of christ our lord and king end of poem this recording is in the public domain anthem of dawn by madison cowine read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson then up the orient heights to the zenith that balanced the crescent up and far up and over the heaven grew arubescent vibrant with rose and with ruby from hands of the harpist dawn smiting symphonic fires in the firmament's barbiton and the east was a priest who adored with offerings of gold and gems and a wonderful carpet unrolled for the inaccessible hymns of the glittering robes of her limbs that lily and amethyst swept glorying on and on through temples of cloud and mist then out of the splendor and richness that burned like a magic stone the torrent suffusion deepened and dazzled and broadened and shone the pomp and the pageant of color triumphal procession of glare the sun like a king in armor breathing splendor from feet to hair stood forth with majesty girdled as a hero who towers afar where the bannered gates are bristling hells and the walls are roaring war and broad on the back of the world like a cherubim's fiery blade the effulgent gaze of his aspect fell in glittering accolade then billowing blue like an ocean rolled from the shores of dawn to even and the stars like rafts went down and the moon like a ghost ship driven a feather of foam from port to port of the cloud-built isles that dotted with pearl and cameo bays of the day her canvas webbed and rotted lay lost in the gulf of heaven while over her mixed and melted the beautiful children of morn whose bodies are opal belted the beautiful daughters of dawn who over and under and after the rivered radiance wrestled and rainbowed heaven with laughter of halcyon sapphire o dawn thou visible mirth thou hallelujah of heaven hosanna of earth in the poem this recording is in the public domain at the lane's end by madison cowain read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver 
B. C. No more to strip the roses from The rose sprays of her porch's place. I dreamed last night that I was home Kissing a rose, her face. I must have smiled in sleep, who knows? The rose aroma filled the lane. I saw her white hands lifted rose that welcomed home again. And yet when I awoke, so wan, my old face wet with icy tears. Somehow it seems she was not gone, though dead now thirty years. The clouds roll up and the clouds roll down over the roofs of the little town out in the hills where the pike winds by field of clover and bottoms of rye you will hear no sound but the barking cough of the striped chickmunk where the lane leads off you will hear no bird but the sap sucker far off in the forest that seems to purr as the warm wind fondles its top grown hot like the docile back of an ocelot you will see no thing but the shine and shade of briars that climb and of weeds that wade the glittering creeks of the heat that fills the dusty road and the red keel hills and all day long in the penny royal the grasshoppers at their anvils toil thick click of their tireless hammers thrum and the wheezy belts of their bellows hum tinkers who solder the silence and heat to make the loneliness more complete around old rails where the blackberries are reddening ripe and the bumblebees are a drowsy rustle of summer skirts and the bob white's wing is the fan she flirts under the hill through the iron weeds and ox-eyed daisies and milk weeds leads the path forgotten of all but one where elder bushes are sick with sun and wild raspberries branch big blue veins or the face of the rock where the old spring rains is sparkling splinters of molten spar on the gravel bed where the tadpoles are you will find the pales of a fallen fence and the tangled orchard and vineyard dense with the weedy neglect of thirty years the garden there where the soft sky clears like an old sweet face that has dried its tears the garden plot where the cabbage grew and the pompous pumpkin and beans that blew balloons of white by the melon patch maize and tomatoes that seem to catch oblong amber and agate balls globed of the sun in the frosty falls long rows of currants and gooseberries and the balsam gourd with its honey bees and here was a nook for the princess plumes the snapdragon and the poppy blooms quaint sweet williams and pansy flowers and the morning glories bewildered bowers tipping their cornucopias up for the humming birds that came to sup and over it all was the sabbath peace of the land whose lap was the love of these and the old log house where my innocence died with my boyhood buried side by side shall a man with a face as withered and gray as the wasp nest stowed in a loft away where the hornets haunt and the mortar drops from the loosened logs of the clapboard tops whom vice has aged as the rotting rooms the rain where memories haunt the glooms 
a hitch in his joints like the room that nars in the rasping hinge of the door that jars a harsh cracked throat like the old stone flue where the swallows build the summer through shall a man i say with the spider sins that the long years spin in the outs and ins of his soul returning to see once more his boyhood's home where his life was poor with toil and tears and their fretfulness but rich with health and the hopes that bless the unsoiled wealth of a vigorous youth shall he not take comfort and know the truth in his threadbare raiment of falsehood yea in his crumbled past he shall kneel and pray like a pilgrim come to the shrine again of the homely saints that shall soothe his pain and arise and depart made clean again years of care cannot efface visions of the hills and trees closing in its dam and race nor the mile-long memories of the mill-stream's lovely place how the sunsets used to stain mirrors of the waters lying under eaves made dark with rain where the red bird westward flying lit to try its song again dingles hills and woods and springs where we come in calm and storm swinging in the grapevine swings waiting where the rocks were warm with our fishing nets and strings here the road plunged down the hill under ash and chinquapin where the grasshoppers would drill ears of silence with their din to the willow girdled mill there the path beyond the ford takes the woodside just below shallows that the lily's sword where the scarlet blossoms blow of the trumpet vine and gourd summer winds that sink with heat on the pelted waters winnow moony paddles that repeat crescents where the startled minnow beats a glittering retreat summer winds that bear the scent of the ironweed and mint weary with sweet freight and spent on the deeper pools imprint stumbling steps whose ripples dent summer winds that split the husk of the peach and nectarine trail along the amber dusk hazy skirts of gold and green spilling balms of dew and musk where with balls of bursting juice summer sees the red wild plum strew the gravel ripened loose autumn hears the pawpaw drum plumpness on the rocks that bruise there we found the water beach one forgotten august noon with a hornet nest in reach like a fairyland balloon full of bustling fairy speech some invasion sure it was for we heard the captain scold waspish cavalry a buzz troopers uniformed in gold sable slashed to charge on us could i find the sedgy angle where the dragonflies would turn slender flittings into spangle on the sunlight or would burn where the berries made a tangle sparkling green and brassy blue rendezvousing by the stream bands of elf banditti who brigands of the bloom and beam drunken were with honey-dew could i find the pond that lay 
where vermilion blossoms showered fragrance down the daisied way that the sassafras embowered with the spice of early may could i find it should i seek the old mill its weather beaten wheel and gable by the creek with its warping roof warm eaten dusty rafters worn and weak where old shadows haunt old places loft and hopper stair and bin ghostly with the dust that laces webs that usher phantoms in wistful with remembered faces while the frogs grave litanies drowse in far-off antiphone supplicating till the eyes of dead friendships long alone in the dusky corners rise moonbeams or the twinkling tip of a star or in the darkling twilight flyer flies there that dip as if night a myriad sparkling jewels from her hands let slip where i dream my youth still crosses with a corn sack for the meal through the sprinkled ferns and mosses to the gray mill's lichened wheel where the water drips and tosses end of poem this recording is in the public domain enchantment by madison cowen read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the deep seclusion of this forest path o'er which the green boughs weave a canopy along which bluet and anemone spread a dim carpet where the twilight hath her dark abode and sweet as aftermath wood fragrance roams has so enchanted me that yonder blossoming bramble seems to be some sylvan resting rosy from her bath has so enspelled me with tradition's dreams that every foam white stream that twinkling flows and every bird that flutters wings of tan or warbles hidden to my fancy seems a naiad dancing to a fawn who blows wild woodland music on the pipes of pan end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the forest by madison cowen read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c one well might deem among these miles of woods such were the forests of the holy grail brosliand and dean where clothed in mail the knights of arthur rode and all the broods of legend laired and where no sound intrudes upon the ear except the glimmering wail of some far bird or in some flowery swale a brook that murmurs to the solitudes might think he hears the laugh of vivian blent with the moan of merlin muttering bound by his own magic to one stony spot and in the cloud that looms above the glen in which the sun burns like the table round might dream he sees the towers of camelot end of home this recording is in the public domain can such things be by madison cowen 
read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Me seemed that while she played, while lightly yet, her fingers fell as roses bloom by bloom. I listened, dead with a mighty room, of some old place where great casements let gaunt moonlight in that glimpsed a parapet of statued marble in the arrust gloom majestic pictures towered dim as doom the dreams of titian and of tintoret and then it seemed along a corridor a mile of oak a stricken footstep came hurrying yet slow i thought long centuries past ere she entered she i loved of yore for whom i died who wildly wailed my name and bent and kissed me on the mouth and eyes end of poem this recording is in the public domain Night Errant by Madison Cowan Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Onward he gallops through enchanted gloom, The phantoms of the forest, dark and dim, And shadows of vast death environ him. Onward he spurs victorious over doom before his eyes that love's far fires illume where courage sits impregnable and grim the form and features of her beauty swim beckoning him on with looks that fears consume the thought of her distress her lips to kiss mails him in triple might and so at last to lust's huge keep he comes its giant wall wild towering frowning from the precipice and through its gate borne like a bugle blast o'er night and hell he thunders to his all end of poem this recording is in the public domain the artist by madison cowan read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c in story books when i was very young i knew her first one of the fairy race and then it was her picture took its place framed round with love's deep gold and draped and hung high in my heart's red room no song was sung no tale of passion told i did not grace with her associated form and face an intimated charm of touch and tongue as years went on she grew to more and more until each thing symbolic to my heart of beauty such as honor truth and fame within the studio of my soul's thought wore her lineaments whom i with all my art strove to embody and to give a name end of poem this recording is in the public domain poetry and philosophy by Madison Cowine, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Out of the past, the dim leaves spake to me the thoughts of Pindar, with a voice so sweet. Hibernian bees seemed swarming my retreat around the reedy well of poesy. I closed the book, then knee to neighbor knee sat with the soul of Plato to repeat doctrines till mine seemed some Socratic seat high on the summit of philosophy around the wave of one religion taught her first rude children from the stars that burned above the mountained ether 
science learned the first vague lessons of the work she wrought daughters of god in whom we still behold the age of iron and the age of gold end of poem this recording is in the public domain quo vadis by madison cowen read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c it is as if imperial trumpets broke again the silence on war's iron height and caesar's armored legions marched to fight while rome blood red upon her mountain yoke blazed like an awful sunset at a stroke again i see the living torches light the horrible revels and the bloated white bade brow of nero smiling through the smoke and here and there a little band of slaves among dark ruins and the form of paul bearded and gaunt expounding still the word and towards the north the tottering architraves of empire and wild waving over all the flaming figure of a gothic sword end of poem this recording is in the public domain to a critic by madison cowen read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c r h s song hath a catalogue of lovely things thy kind hath oft defiled whose spite misleads the world too often where the poet reads as in a fable of old envyings crows such as thou which hush the bird that sings or kill it with their cawings thorns and weeds such as thyself midst which the wind so seeds of flowers these crush before one blossom swings but here and there the wisdom of a school unknown to these hath often written down fame in white ink the future hath turned brown when every beauty heaped with ridicule in their ignoble prose proved their renown making each famous as an ass or fool end of poem this recording is in the public domain quatrains by madison cowen read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c one poetry who hath beheld the goddess face to face blind with her beauty all his days shall go climbing lone mountains towards her temple's place weighed with song sweet inexorable woe two the unimaginative each form of beauty's but the new disguise of thoughts more beautiful than forms can be skeptics who search with unanointed eyes never the earth's wild fairy dance shall see three music god born before the sons of god she hurled with awful sympathies of flood and fire god's name on rocking chaos world by world flamed as the universe rolled from her lyre four the three elements they come as couriers of heaven their feet sonorous sandaled with majestic awe in raiment of swift foam and wind and heat blowing the trumpets of god's wrath and law five rome above the circus of the world she sat 
beautiful and base a harlot crowned with pride fierce nations upon whom she sneered and spat shrieked at her feet and for her pastime died six on reading the life of harun ur rashid down all the lantern baghdad of our youth he steals with golden justice for the poor within his palace you shall know the truth a blood-smeared headsman hides behind each door seven menosomy in classic beauty cold immaculate a voiceful sculpture stern and still she stands upon her brow deep chiseled love and hate that sorrow o'er dead roses in her hands eight beauty high as a star yet lowly as a flower unknown she takes her unassuming place at earth's proud masquerade the appointed hour strikes and behold the marvel of her face nine the stars these the bright symbols of man's hope and fame in which he reads his blessing or his curse are syllables which god speaks his name in the vast utterance of the universe ten echo dweller in hollow places hills and rocks daughter of silence and old solitude tiptoe she stands within her cave or wood her only life the noises that she mocks end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Dreamer by Madison Cowan, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Even as a child, he loved to thrid the bowers, and mark the loafing sunlight's lazy laugh, or on each season spell the epitaph of its dead months repeated in their flowers, or list the music of the strolling showers whose vagabond notes strummed through a twinkling staff or read the day's delivered monograph through all the chapters of its deedal hours still with the same child faith and child regard he looks on nature hearing at her heart the beautiful beat out the time and place through which no lesson of this life is hard no struggle vain of science or of art that dies with failure written on its face end of poem this recording is in the public domain winter by madison cowan Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The flute went summer's dreamy fingertips, drew music, ripening the cramped kernels in the burly chestnut and the chinquapin, red rounding out the oval haws and hips. Now winter crushes to his stormy lips and surly songs whistle around his chin now the wild days and wilder nights begin when at the eaves the lengthening icicle drips thy songs o summer are not lost so soon still dwells a memory in thy hollow flute which unto winter's masculine airs doth give thy own creative qualities of tune through which we see each bough bend white with fruit each branch with bloom in snow commemorative end of poem this recording is in the public domain
midwinter by madison cawin read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c all day the clouds hung ashen with the cold and through the snow the muffled waters fell the day seemed drowned in grief too deep to tell like some old hermit whose last bead is told at eve the wind woke and the snow clouds rolled aside to leave the fierce sky visible harsh as an iron landscape of wan hell the dark hills hung framed in with gloomy gold and then towards night the wind seemed some one at my window wailing now a little child crying outside my door and now the long howl of some starved beast down the flue i sat and knew twas winter with his madman song of miseries on which he stared and smiled end of poem this recording is in the public domain spring by madison cowan read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c first came the rain loud with sonorous lips a pursuivant who heralded a prince and dawn put on her livery of tints and dusk bound gold about her hair and hips and all in silver mail the sunlight came a knight who bade the winter let him pass and freed imprisoned beauty naked as the court of love in all her wild flower shame and so she came in breeze-born loveliness across the hills and heaven bent down to bless above her head the birds were as a choir and at her feet like some strong worshipper the shouting water paned praise of her who with blue eyes set the wild world on fire end of poem this recording is in the public domain transformation by madison cowan read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c it is the time when by the forest falls the touch-me-nots hang fairy folly caps when ferns and flowers fill the lichened laps of rocks with color rich as orient shawls and in my heart i hear a voice that calls me woodward where the hamadryad wraps her limbs in bark and bubbling in the saps sings the sweet greek of pan's old madrigals there is a gleam that lures me up the stream a naiad swimming with wet limbs of light perfume that leads me on from dream to dream and orid's footprints flowering into flight and lo me seems i am a fawn again one with the myths that i pursue in vain end of poem this recording is in the public domain response by madison cowan read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c there is a music of immaculate love that beats within the virginal veins of spring and trillium blossoms like the stars that cling to fairies wands and strung on sprays above white hearts and madrake blooms that look enough like the elves washing white with laundering of may moon dews and all pale opening 
wildflowers of the woods are born thereof there is no sod spring's white foot brushes but must feel the music that vibrates within and thrill to the communicated touch responsive harmonies that must unshut the heart of beauty for song's concrete kin emotions that are flowers born of such end of poem this recording is in the public domain the swashbuckler by madison carwine read for librivox dot org squat nosed and broad of big and pompous port a tavern visage apoplexy haunts all pimple puffed the falstaff like resort of fat debauchery whose veined cheek flaunts a flabby purple rusty spurred he stands in rake hell boots and belt and hanger that claps when with greasy gauntlets on his hands he swaggers past in cloak and slouch plumed hat aggression marches armies in his words and in his oaths great deeds ride kappa p his looks his gestures breathe the breath of swords and in his carriage camp all wars to be with him of battles there shall be no lack while buxom wenches are and stoops of sack end of poem this recording is in the public domain simulacra by madison kawine read for librivox dot org by matthew d robinson dark in the west the sunset's somber rack unrolled vast walls the rams of war had split along whose battlements the battle lit tempestuous beacons and with gates hurled back a mighty city red with ruin and sack through burning breaches crumbling bit by bit showed where the god of slaughter seemed to sit with conflagration glaring at each crack who knows perhaps as sleep unto us makes our dreams as real as our waking seems with recollections time cannot destroy so in the mind of nature now awakes haply some wilder memory and she dreams the stormy story of the fall of troy end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Bluebird by Madison Cowan, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. From morn till noon upon the window pane, the tempest tapped with rainy fingernails, and all the afternoon the blustering gales beat at the door with furious feet of rain. The rose near which the lilies bloom lay slain like some red wound dripped by the garden rails on which the sullen slug left silvery trails it seemed the sun would never shine again then in the drench long loud and clarion clear a skyey herald tabarded in blue a bluebird warbled, and at once a bow was bent in heaven, and I seemed to hear God's sapphire spaces crystallizing through the stratted clouds in azure tremolo. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Caverns by Madison Cowan, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Written of Colossal Cave, Kentucky. Isles and abysses, leagues, no man explores, of rock that labyrinths and night that drips, where everlasting silence broods with lips of adamant or earthquake builded floors where forms such as the demon world adores laborious water carves whence echo slips wild tongued o'er pools where petrifaction strips her breasts of crystal from which crystal pours here where primordial fear the gorgon sits staring all life to stone in ghastly mirth i seem to tread with awe no tongue can tell beneath vast domes by torrent tortured pits mid wrecks terrific of the ruined earth an ancient causeway of forgotten hell end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Voice on the Wind Proem by Madison Cowine Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Oh, for a soul that fulfills music like that of a bird, Thrilling with rapture the hills, heedless if anyone heard, Or like the flower that blooms lone in the midst of the trees, Filling the woods with perfumes, careless if anyone sees or like the wandering wind over the meadows that swings bringing wild sweets to mankind knowing not that which it brings oh for a way to impart beauty no matter how hard like unto nature whose art never once dreams of reward in the poem this recording is in the public domain A Voice on the Wind by Madison Cowain, read by Elsie Selwyn. She walks with the wind on the windy height, when the rocks are loud and the waves are white, and all night long she calls through the night, Oh, my children, come home! Her bleak gown, torn as a tattered cloud, tosses around her like a shroud, while over the deep her voice rings loud, Oh, my children, come home, come home! Oh, my children, come home! Who is she who wanders alone when the wind drives sheer and the rain is blown? Who walks all night and makes her moan, Oh, my children, come home! Whose face is raised to the blinding gale, whose hair blows black and whose eyes are pale, while over the world goes by her wail, Oh, my children, come home, come home! Oh, my children, come home! She walks with the wind in the windy wood, the dark rain drips from her hair and hood, and her cry sobs by like a ghost pursued. Oh, my children, come home! Where the trees loom gaunt and the rocks stretch drear, the owl and the fox crouch back in fear, as wild through the wood her voice they hear. Oh, my children, come home, come home! Oh, my children, come home! Who is she who shudders by when the boughs blow bare and the dead leaves fly? Who walks all night with her wailing cry? Oh, my children, come home! Who strange of look and wild of tongue, with wan feet wounded and hands wild wrung, sweeps on and on with her cry far flung, Oh, my children, come home, come home, oh, my children, come home. Tis the spirit of autumn no man sees, the mother of death and of mysteries, who cries on the wind all night to these, Oh, my children, come home. The spirit of autumn, pierced with pain, calling her children home again, Death and dreams through ruin and rain. Oh, my children, come home, come home. Oh, my children, come home. End of poem. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Land of Hearts Made Whole by Madison Cowain. Read by Elsie Selwyn. Do you know the way that goes over fields of rue and rose? Warm of scent and hot of hue, roofed with heaven's bluest blue, 
to the veil of dreams come true. Do you know the path that twines, banked with elder bosks and vines, under boughs that shade a stream, hurrying, crystal as a gleam, to the hills of love a dream? Tell me, tell me, have you gone, through the fields and woods of dawn, meadowlands and trees that roll, great of grass and huge of bowl, to make the land of hearts made whole? On the way among the fields, poppies lift vermilion shields, in whose heart the golden noon, murmuring her drowsy tune, rocks the sleepy bees that croon. On the way amid the woods, mandrakes muster multitudes, mid whose blossoms white as tusk glides the glimmering forest dusk, with her moths of fluttering musk. Here you hear the stealthy stir of shy lives of hoof and fur, Harmless things that hide and peer, hearts that sucked the milk of fear, fox and rabbit, squirrel and deer. Here you see the mossy flight of faint forms that love the night, whippoorwill and owlet things whose weird call before you brings wonder worlds of happenings. Now in sunlight, now in shade, water like a brandished blade, foaming forward, wild of flight startles then arrests the sight whirling steely loops of light through the treetops down the vale breezes roam and leave a trail of cool music that the birds following in happy herds gather up in twittering words blossoms frail and manifold shower the way with pearl and gold blurs that seem the darling print of the springtime's feet or glint of her twinkling gown's torn tint there the myths of old endure, dreams that are the world soul's cure, things that have no place or play in the, in the facts of every day, round your presence smile and sway. Suddenly your eyes may see, stepping softly from a tree, slim of form and wet with dew, the brown dryad lips the hue of a berry bit in two. You may mark the naiad rise from her pool's reflected skies, in her gaze the heaven that dreams, starred and twilight-haunted streams, mixed with water's grayer gleams. You may see the laurel's girth, big with bloom, give fragrant birth, to the oread whose hair, musk in darkness, light and air, fills the hush with wonder there. You may mark the rocks divide and the fawn before you glide, piping on a magic reed, sowing many a music seed, from which bloom and mushroom bead. Of the rain and sunlight born, young of beard and young of horn, you may see the satyr lie with a very knowing eye, teaching fledgling birds to fly. These shall cheer and follow you through the veil of dreams come true, wind-like voices, leaf-like feet, forms of mist and hazy heat, in whose pulses sunbeams beat. Lo, you tread enchanted ground from the hollows all around, Elf and spirit, gnome and fay, guide your feet along the way, till the dewy close of day. Then beside you, jet on jet, emerald-hued and violet, flickering floats a firefly light, eye to guide your steps aright, from the valley to the height. Steep the way as when at last, vale and wood and stream are past, from the height you shall behold, panther heavens of spotted gold, tiger tawny deeps unfold. You shall see on stalks and stones sunsets bell-deep color tones, fallen in the valleys filled with dusk's purple music spilled on the silence rapture thrilled. Then, as answering bell greets bell, night ring in her miracle of the domed dark o'er rolled, note on note with starlight cold, twixt the moon's broad peal of gold. On the hilltop, love a dream, shows you then her window gleam, brings you home and folds your soul in the peace of vale and knoll, in the lands of hearts made whole. End of poem. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Wind of Summer From the hills and far away, all the long warm summer day, comes the wind and seems to say, Come, oh, come, and let us go where the meadows bend and blow, waving with the white top snow. Neath the hyssop-colored sky, mid the meadows will we lie, 
watching the white clouds roll by while your hair my hand shall press with a cooling tenderness till your grief goes less and less come o oh, come and let us roam where the rock-cut waters comb flowing crystal into foam under trees whose trunks are brown on the banks that violets crown we will watch the fish flash down while my voice your ear shall soothe with a whisper soft and smooth till your care shall wax uncouth come where forests line on line armies of the oak and pine scale the hills and shout and shine we will wander hand in hand ways where tall the toadstools stand milestones white of fairyland while your eyes my lips shall kiss dewy as a wild rose is till they gaze on naught but bliss on the meadows you will hear leaning low your spirit ear cautious footsteps drawing near you will deem it but a bee murmuring soft and sleepily till your inner sight shall see tis a presence passing slow all its shining hair ablow through the white tops tossing snow by the waters if you will and your innermost soul is still melody your ears shall fill you will deem it but the stream rippling onward in a dream till upon your gaze shall gleam arm of spray and throat of foam tis a spirit there a roam where the radiant waters comb in the forest if you heed you shall hear a magic reed so sweet notes like silver seed you will deem your ears have heard stir of tree or song of bird till your startled eyes are blurred by a vision instant seen naked gold and naked green glimmering the boughs between follow me and you shall see wonder worlds of mystery that are only known to me thus outside my city door speaks the wind its wildwood lore speaks and lo i go once more end of poem this librivox recording is in the public domain the wind of winter by madison Cowain, read by elsie selwyn the winter wind the wind of death who knocked upon my door now through the keyhole entereth invisible and hoar he breathes around his icy breath and treads the flickering floor i heard him wandering in the night tap at my window pane with ghostly fingers snowy white i hear him tug in vain until the shuddering candle light did cringe with fear and strain the fire awakened by his voice leapt up with frantic arms like some wild babe that greets with noise its father home who storms with rosy gestures that rejoice in crimson kiss that warms now on the hearth he sits and drowned among the ashes blows or through the room go stealing round on cautious stepping toes deep mantled in the drowsy sound of night that sleets and snows and oft like some thin fairy thing the stormy hush amid i hear his captive trebles ring beneath the kettle's lid or now a harp of elfland string and some dark cranny hid again i hear him imp like whine cramped in the gusty flue or knotted in the resinous pine raise goblin cry and hue while through the smoke his eyeballs shine a sooty red and blue at last i hear him nearing dawn take up his roaring broom and sweep wild leaves from wood and lawn and from the heavens the gloom to show the gaunt world lying wan and morn's cold rose a bloom end of poem this librivox recording is in the public domain the leaf cricket by madison Cowain, read by elsie selwyn small twilight singer of dew and mist thou ghost gray gossamer winger of dusk's dim glimmer how cool thy note sounds how thy wings of shimmer vibrate soft sighing meseems for summer that is dead or dying i stand and listen and at thy song the garden beds that glisten with rose and lily seem touched with sadness and the tuberose chilly breathing around its cold and colorless breath fills the pale evening with wan hints of death i see thee quaintly beneath the leaf thy shell-shaped winglets faintly as thin as spangle of cobwebbed rain held up at airy angle 
I hear thy tinkle, thy fairy notes, the silvery stillness sprinkle, investing wholly the moonlight with divinest melancholy, until, in seeming, I see the spirit of the summer dreaming amid her ripened orchids, apple strewn, her great grave eyes fixed on the harvest moon. As dewdrops beady, as mist minute, thy notes ring low and reedy, the vaguest vapor of melody now near, now like some taper, of sound far fading, thou willow wisp of music I evading, among the bowers, the fog washed stalks of autumn's weeds and flowers, by hill and hollow, I hear thy murmur and in vain I follow, thou jack o' lantern voice, thou elfin cry, thou dirge that tellest beauty she must die. And when the frantic Wild winds of autumn with the dead leaves antic, and walnuts scatter, the mire of lanes and dropping acorns patter, and grove and forest like some frail grief, with the rude blast thou worest, sending thy slender, far cry against the gale that rough, untender, untouched of sorrow, sweeps thee aside where haply I tomorrow shall find thee lying tiny, cold and crushed, thy weak wings folded, and thy music hushed. End of poem. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Owlet by Madison Cowain Read by Elsie Selwyn When dusk is drowned in drowsy dreams, And slow the hues of sunset die, When firefly and moth go by, and in still streams the new moon gleams, a sickle in the sky. Then from the hills there comes a cry, the owlet's cry, a shivering voice that sobs and screams, that frightened screams. Who is it, who is it, who, who rides through the dusk and dew, with a pair of horns as thin as thorns, and a face a bubble blue? Who, 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 who is it, who is it, who, when night has dulled the lilies white and opened wide the moonflower's eyes, when pale mists rise and veil the skies, and round the height in whispering flight the night wind sounds and sighs, then in the woods again it cries, the owlet cries, a shivering voice that calls in fright, in maundering fright. Who is it? Who is it? Who? Who walks with a shuffling shoe? Mid the gusty trees, with a face none sees, and a form as ghostly too. Who, 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 who is it, who is it, who? When midnight leans a listening ear and tinkles on her insect lutes, when mid the roots the cricket flutes, and marsh and mere, now far, now near, a jack-o'-lantern foots, then o'er the pool again it hoots. The owlet hoots, a voice that shivers as with fear, that cries in fear. Who is it? Who is it? Who? Who creeps with his glow-worm crew above the mire with a corpse-light fire as only dead men do? Who? 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 Who is it? Who is it? Who? End of poem. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Poet by Madison Cowine, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. He stands above all worldly schism, and gazing over life's abysm, beholds within the starry range of heaven laws of death and change that through his soul's pathetic prism are turned to rainbows wild and strange. Through nature is his hope made sure of that ideal, his allure by whom his life is upward drawn to mount pale pinnacles of dawn, mid which all that is fairer, purer of love and lore it comes upon. An alkahest that makes gold metal of dross his mind is, where one petal of one wild rose will well outweigh the piled-up facts of every day, where commonplaces there that settle are changed to things of heavenly ray. He climbs by steps of stars and flowers, companioned of the spirit hours, and sets his feet in pastures where no merely mortal feet may fare. And higher than the stars he towers, though lowly as the flowers there. 
His comrades are his own high fancies, And thoughts in which his soul romances, And every part of heaven or earth he visits, Lo, assumes new worth, And touched with loftier traits and traces, Reshines as with a lovelier birth. He is the play, also the player, the word that said likewise the sayer and in the books of heart and head there is no thing he has not read of time and tears he is the wear and mouthpiece twixt the quick and dead he dies but mounting ever higher wings phoenix-like from out his pyre above our mortal day and night clothed on with sempiternal light and raimented in thought's fine fire flames on in everlasting flight unseen yet seen on heights of visions above all praise and world derisions his spirit and his deathless brood of dreams fare on a multitude while on the pillar of great missions his name and place are granite hued in the poem this recording is in the public domain summer noontide by madison Cowain read by elsie selwyn the slender snail clings to the leaf gray on its silvered underside and slowly slowlier than the snail with brief bright steps whose ripening touch foretells the sheaf her warm hands berry dyed comes down the tanned noontide the pungent fragrance of the mint in penny royal drench her gown that leaves long shreds of trumpet blossom tint among the thorns and everywhere the glint of gold and white and brown her flowery steps waft down the leaves like hands with emerald veined along her way try their wild best to reach the jewel whose hot hue was drained from some rich rose that all the june contained the butterfly soft pressed upon her sunny breast her shawl the lace-like elder bloom she hangs upon the hillside brake smelling of warmth and of her breast's perfume and lying in the citron colored gloom beside the lilied lake she stares the buds awake or with a smile through watery deeps she leads the oaring turtle's legs or guides the crimson fin that swims and sleeps from pad to pad from which the young frog leaps and to its nest's green eggs the reed bird there that begs then mid the fields of unmown hay she shows the bees where sweets are found and points the butterflies at airy play and dragonflies along the waterway where honeyed flowers abound for them to flicker round or where ripe apples pelt with gold some barn about which coned with snow the wild potato blooms she mounts its old mossed roof and through warped sides the knots have hold lets her long glances glow into the loft below to show the mud wasp at its cell slenderly busy swallows too packing against a beam their nest's clay shell and crouching in the dark the owl as well with all her downy crew of owlets gray of hue these are her joys and until dusk lounging she walks where reapers reap from sultry raiment's shaking scents of musk rustling the corn within its silken husk and driving down heaven's deep white herds of clouds like sheep end of poem this librivox recording is in the public domain to the locust by madison Cowain, read by elsie selwyn thou pulse of hotness who with reed-like breast makest meridian music long and loud accentuating summer dost thy best to make the sunbeams fiercer and to crowd with lonesomeness the long close afternoon when labor leans swart-faced and beady-browed upon his sultry scythe thou tangible tune of heat whose waves incessantly arise quivering and clear beneath the cloudless skies thou singest and upon his haggard hills drouth yawns and rubs his heavy eyes and wakes brushes the hot air from his face and fills the land with death as sullenly he takes downward his dusty way midst woods and fields at every pool his burning thirst he slakes 
No grove so deep, no bank so high, it shields a spring from him. No creek evades his eye. He needs but look, and they are withered dry. Thou singest, and thy song is a spell of somnolence to charm the land with sleep, a thorn of sound that pierces dale and dell, diffusing slumber over vale and steep. Sleepy the forest, nodding sleepy boughs, sleepy the pastures with their sleepy sheep. Sleepy the creek where sleepily the cows stand knee-deep in the very heaven seems, sleepy and lost in undetermined dreams. Art thou a rattle that monotony, summer's dull nurse, old sister of slow time, shakes from day's peevish pleasure, who in glee takes its discordant music for sweet rhyme? Or oboe that the summer noontime plays, sitting with ripeness neath the orchard tree, trying repeatedly the same shrill phrase, until the musky peach with weariness drops and the hum of murmuring bees grows less? End of poem. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. July by Madison Coyne Read by Elsie Selwyn Now tis the time when tall The long blue torches of the bell-flower gleam Among the trees and by the wooded stream In many a fragrant ball Blooms of the button-bush fall. Let us go forth and seek Woods where the wild plums redden, and the beech plumps its stout burrs and swelling just in reach, the pawpaw emerald sleek ripens along the creek. Now tis the time when waves of glimmering green flaunt white the giant plumes of the black cohosh, and through bramble glooms a blur of orange rays, the butterfly blossoms blaze. Let us go forth and hear the spiral music that the locusts beat, and that small spray of sound, so grassy sweet, dear to a country ear, the cricket's summer cheer. Now golden celadine, as hairy hung with silvery sacks of seeds, and bugled o'er with freckled gold like beads, beneath the fox grape vine, the jewel weeds blossoms shine. Let us go forth and see the dragon and the butterfly like gems, spangling the sunbeams and the clover stems, weighed down with many a bee, nodding mellifluously. Now morns are full of song, the catbird and the redbird and the jay, upon the hilltops rouse the ruddy day, who dewy, blithe, and strong, lures their wild wings along. Now noons are full of dreams, the clouds of heaven and the wandering breeze, Follow a vision in the flowers and the trees, The hills and fields and streams Are lapped in mystic gleams. The nights are full of love, The stars and moon take up the golden tale Of the sunk sun and passionate and pale, Mixing their fires above, Grow eloquent thereof. Such days are like a sigh That beauty heaves from a full heart of bliss. Such nights are like the sweetness of a kiss, on lips that half deny the warm lips of July. End of poem. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Evening on the Farm by Madison Cowain. Read by Elsie Selwyn. From out the hills where twilight stands, above the shadowy pasture lands, with strained and strident cry beneath pale skies that sunset bands, the bull bats fly. A cloud hangs over, strange of shape, and colored like the half ripe grape, seems some uneven stain on heaven's azure, thin as crepe and blue as rain. By ways that sunset sardonyx o'er flares and gates the farm boy clicks, through which the cattle came, the mullein stalks seem giant wicks of downy flame. From woods no glimmer enters in, above the streams that wandering win. From out the violet hills, those haunters of the dusk begin, the whippoorwills. Adown the dark the firefly marks its flight and golden emerald sparks, and loosened from his chain, the shaggy watchdog bounds and barks, and barks again. Each breeze brings scents of hill-heaped hay, and now an owlet far away, cries twice or thrice, Too hoo and cool dim moths of mottled gray flit through the dew. The silence sounds its frog bassoon, where on the woodland creek's lagoon, 
pale as a ghostly girl lost mid the trees looks down the moon with face of pearl within the shed where logs late hued smell forest sweet and chips of wood make blurs of white and brown the brood hen cuddles her warm brood of teetering down the clattering guineas in the tree din for a time and quietly the hen-house near the fence sleeps save for some brief rivalry of cocks and hens a cow-bell tinkles by the rails where streaming white and foaming pails milk makes an uttery sound while overhead the black bat trails around and round the night is still the slow cows chew a drowsy cud the bird that flew and sang is in its nest it is time of falling dew of dreams and rest the brown bees sleep and round the walk the garden path from stalk to stalk the bungling beetle booms where two soft shadows stand and talk among the blooms the stars are thick the light is dead that dyed the west in drowsy head turning his cricket pipe nods in some apple round and red drops over ripe now down the road that shambles by a window shining like an eye through climbing rows and gourd shows where toil sups and these things lie his heart and hoard end of poem this librivox recording is in the public domain Under the Hunter's Moon by Madison Cowain Read by Elsie Selwyn White from her chrysalis of cloud, The moth-like moon swings upward through the night, And all the bee-like stars that crowd, Heaven's hollow hive wane in her silvery light. Along the distance folds of mist Hang frost pale, ridging all the dark with gray, Tinting the trees with amethyst, Touching with pearl and purple every spray. All night the stealthy frost and fog Conspire to slay the rich-robed weeds and flowers, To strip the woods of wealth and clog With piled-up gold of leaves the creek that cowers. I seem to see their spirits stand, Molded of moonlight, faint of form and face, Now reaching high a chilly hand, to pluck some walnut from its spicy place. Now with fine fingers, phantom cold, Splitting the wahoo's pods of rose and thin, The bittersweet's globes of gold, To show the coal-red berries packed within. Now on fail threads of gossamer, Slinging the slim pearls of moisture, Necklacing the flowers, And spreading cobweb fur, Crystalled with stardew over everything. While neath the moon with moon-white feet They wander and a moon-chill music draw From thin leaf-cricket flutes the sweet Dim dirge of autumn dying in the shaw. End of poem. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. In the Lane by Madison Cowine Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. When the hornet hangs in the hollyhock, And the brown bee drones i' the rose, And the west is a red streaked four o'clock, And summer is near its close, It's all oh for the gate and the locust lane, And dusk and dew and home again. When the katydid sings and the cricket cries and ghosts of the mists ascend and the evening star is a lamp i' the skies and summer is near its end it's all oh for the fence and the leafy lane and the twilight peace and the tryst again when the owlet hoots in the dogwood tree that leans to the rippling run and the wind is a wildwood melody, And summer is almost done. It's all oh for the bridge and the bramble lane, And the fragrant hush and her hands again. When fields smell moist with the dewy hay, And woods are cool and wan, And a path for dreams is the milky way, And summer is nearly gone. 
it's all for the rock and the woodland lane and the silence and stars and her lips again when the weight of the apples breaks down the limbs and muskmelons split with sweet and the moon's broad boat in the heaven swims and summer has spent its heat it's all oh for the lane the trysting lane and the deep mooned night and her love again End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Epiphany by Madison Kawine. Read for LibriVox.org by Matthew D. Robinson. There is nothing that eases my heart so much as the wind that blows from the great green hills. Tis a hand of balsam whose healing touch unburdens my bosom of ills. There is nothing that maketh my soul to rejoice like the sunset flaming without a flaw. Tis a burning bush whence God's own voice addresses my spirit with awe. There is nothing that hallows my mind, me seems, like the night with its moon and its starry slope. Tis a mystical lily whose golden gleams fulfill my being with hope. There is nothing, no nothing we see and feel that speaks to our soul some beautiful thought that was not created to help us and heal our lives that are overwrought. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Life by Madison Cawine, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Pessimist There is never a thing we dream or do, but was dreamed and done in the ages gone. Everything's old, there is nothing that's new, and so it will be while the world goes on. The thoughts we think have been thought before, the deeds we do have long been done. We pride ourselves on our love and lore and both are as old as the moon and sun we strive and struggle and swink and sweat and the end for each is one and the same time and the sun and the frost and wet will wear from its pillar the greatest name no answer comes for our prayer or curse no word replies though we shriek in air ever the taciturn universe stretches unchanged for our curse or prayer with our mind's small light in the dark we crawl glow-worm glimmers that creep about till the power that made us over us all poises his foot and treads us out a nasty fashions us out of clay a little water a little dust and then in our holes he thrusts us away with never a word to rot and rust tis a sorry play with a sorry plot this life of hate of lust and pain where we play our parts and are soon forgot and all that we do is done in vain optimist there is never a dream but it shall come true and never a deed but was wrought by plan and life is filled with the strange and new and never has been since the world began as mind develops and soul matures these too shall parent earth's mightier acts love is a fact and tis love endures though the world make wreck of all other facts through thought alone shall our age obtain above all ages gone before the tribes of sloth the brawn not brain are the tribes that perish are known no more within ourselves as a voice of awe and a hand that points to balanced scales the one is love the other law and their presence alone it is avail for every shadow about our way there is a glory of moon and sun but the hope within us has more of ray than the light of the sun and the moon made one behind all being a purpose lies undeviating as god hath willed and he alone it is who dies who leaves that purpose unfulfilled life is an epic the master sings whose theme is man 
and whose music soul where each is a word in the song of things that shall roll on while the ages roll in the poem this recording is in the public domain meeting in the woods by madison kawain read for LibriVox.org by sophia koshik through ferns and moss the path wound to a hollow where the touch-me-nots swung horns of honey filled with dew and where like footprints violets blew and bluets made sweet sapphire blots twas there that she had passed i knew the grass the very wilderness on either side breathed rapture of her passage twas her hand or dress that touched some tree a slight caress that made the woodbirds sing above her step that woke the flowers i guess i hurried till across my way foam-footed bounding through the wood a brook like some wild child at play went laughing loud its roundelay and there upon its bank she stood a sunbeam clad in forest gray and when she saw me all her face bloomed like a wild rose by the stream and to my breast a moment's space i gathered her and all the place seemed conscious of some happy dream come true to add to earth its grace some union that was heaven's intent for which god made the world the bliss the love that raised her innocent young face to mine that smiling bent and sealed her first words with a kiss as love might close his testament end of poem this recording is in the public domain Rose and Brew by Madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Sophia Koshik. Mamie Dean, ah, Mamie Dean, do you remember where the willows used to screen the water flowing fair? The mill stream's banks of green, where first our love begun, where you were seventeen and I was twenty one. Mamie Dean, ah, Mamie Dean, do you remember how? from the old bridge we would lean the bridge that's broken now to watch the minnows sheen through ripples of the run when you were seventeen and i was twenty-one mamie dean ah mamie dean do you remember too the old beech tree between whose roots the wind flowers grew where oft we sat at eleven where stars were few or none when you were seventeen and i was twenty-one mamie dean ah mamie dean the bark is grown around the names i cut therein and the true love knot that bound the love knot clear and clean i carved when our love begun when you were seventeen and i was twenty-one mamie dean ah mamie dean the roof of the farmhouse gray is fallen and mossy green its rafters rot away the old path scarce is seen where oft our feet would run when you were seventeen and I was twenty-one. Mamie Dean, ah, Mamie Dean, through each old tree and bough, the lone winds cry and keen. The place is haunted now, with ghosts of what has been, and dreams of love long done, when you were seventeen, and I was twenty-one. Mamie Dean, ah, Mamie Dean, there in your world of wealth, there where you move a queen, broken in heart and health, does there ever rise a scene of days your thought would shun when you were seventeen and i was twenty-one mamie dean ah mamie dean here mid the rose and rue would god that your grave was green and i were lying too here on the hill i mean where oft we laughed in the sun when you were seventeen and i was twenty-one end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Maid Who Died Old by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by the letter A Frail, shrunken face, so pinched and worn That life has carved with care and doubt So weary waiting, night and morn For that which never came about Pale lamp, so utterly forlorn In which God's light at last is out gray hair 
that lies so thin and prim on either side the sun can browse, and soldered eyes so deep and dim no word of man could now arouse, and hollow hands so virgin slim forever clasped in silent vows. Poor breasts that God designed for love, for baby lips to kiss and press, that never felt, yet dreamed thereof, the human touch, the child caress, that lie like shriveled blooms above the heart's long perished happiness. O withered body, nature gave for purposes of death and birth, that never knew and could but crave those things perhaps that make life worth. Rest now, alas, within the grave, sad shell that serve no end of earth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Communicants by Madison Kawine Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk who knows the things they dream, alas, or feel, who lie beneath the ground? Perhaps the flowers, the leaves and grass that close them round. In spring the violets may spell the moods of them we know not of, or lilies sweetly syllable their thoughts of love. Haply in summer, dew and scent of all they feel may be a part each red rose be the testament of some rich heart the winds of fall be utterance perhaps of saddest things they say wild leaves may word some dead romance in some dim way in winter all their sleep profound through frost may speak to grass and stream stilling them with the silent sound of all they dream end of poem this recording is in the public domain the dead day by madison kawine read for librivox.org by bruce kachuk the west builds high a sepulchre of cloudy granite and of gold where twilight's priestly hours inter the day like some great king of old a censer rimmed with silver fire the new moon swings above his tomb while organ stops of god's own choir star after star throbs in the gloom and night draws near the sadly sweet a nun whose face is calm and fair and kneeling at the dead day's feet her soul goes up in silent prayer in prayer we feel through dewy gleam and flowery fragrance and above all earth the ecstasy and dream that haunt the mystic heart of love end of poem this recording is in the public domain allurement by madison kawine read for librivox.org by bruce kachuk across the world she sends me word from gardens fair as Falerina's, now by a blossom, now a bird, to come to her, who long has lured with magic sweeter than Alcina's. I know not what her word may mean, I know not what may mean the voices she sends as messengers unseen, that through the hush around me lean and whisper, till my heart rejoices soon must i go i must away must take the path that is appointed god grant i reach her realm some day 
whereby her love as by a ray my soul shall be anointed end of poem this recording is in the public domain august read for LibriVox.org by alan lawley clad on with glowing beauty and the peace benign of calm maturity she stands among her meadows and her orchard lands and on her mellowing gardens and her trees out of the ripe abundance of her hands bestows increase and fruitfulness as wrapped in sunny ease blue-eyed and blonde she goes upon her bosom summer's richest rose and he who follows where her footsteps lead by hill and rock by forest side and stream may glimpse the glory of her visible dream in flower and fruit in rounded nut and seed she in whose path the very shadows gleam whose humblest weed seems lovelier than june's loveliest flower indeed and sweeter to the smell than april's self within a rainy dell hers is a sumptuous simplicity within the fair republic of her flowers where you may see her standing hours on hours breast deep in gold soft holding up a bee to her hushed ear or sitting under bowers of greenery a butterfly a tilt upon her knee or lounging on her hip dancing a cricket on her fingertip i let me breathe hot scents that tell of you the hoary catnip and the meadow mint on which the honour of your touch doth print itself as odour let me drink the hue of ironweed and mist flower here that hint with purple and blue the rapture that your presence doth imbue their inmost essence with immortal though as transient as a myth yea let me feed on sounds that still assure me where you hide the brooks whose happy din tells where the deep retired woods within disrobed you bathe the birds whose drowsy lure tells where you slumber your warm nestling chin soft on the pure pink cushion of your palm what better cure for care and memories ache than to behold you thus and watch you wake end of poem this recording is in the public domain the bush sparrow by madison cowan read for librivox dot org by chad horner from benadorm in the province of alicante in eastern spain on the mediterranean coast sixth of june two thousand and nineteen the bush sparrow er wild haws looming in the glooms build bolted drifts of breezy blooms and in the whistling hollow there the red bud bends as brown and bare as buxom roxy's upstripped arm from some grey hickory or larch sighed o'er the sodden meads of march the sad heart thrills and reddens warm to hear you braving the rough storm frail courier of green gathering powers rebelling sap in trees and flowers love's minister come heralding o oh, sweet saint voice among bleak bowers o oh, brown red pursuivant of spring moan sob the woodland water still down bloomless ledges of the hill and grey gaunt clouds like harpies hang in harpy heavens and swoop and clang spark sharp beaks and talons of the wind black scar the forests and unkind the far fields as the near wild song seems murdered and all beauty wrong 
one weak frog only in the thaw of spoony pools wakes cold and raw expires a melancholy pace and stops as if bewildered then along the frowning wood again flung in the thin wind's vulture face from woolly tassels of the pride red bannered maples long and loud the spring has come is here her grace her grace her grace the spring her grace her grace climbs beautiful and sunny bride up up the kindling hills and wakes blueberries in the berry breaks with fragrant flakes that blow and bleach deep powders smothered quince and peach eyes dogwoods with a thousand eyes teaches each sod how to be wise with twenty wild flowers to one weed and kisses germs that they may seed in purest purple and sweet white treads up the happier hills of light bloom cloudy born song in her hair and balm and beam of odorous air winds her retainers and the rains her yew men strong who sweep the plains her scarlet nights of dawn and gold of eve her panoply unfold her herald tabarded behold awake to greet prepare to sing she comes the darling duchess spring end of poem this recording is in the public domain